Sahara from 1943 was a World War II movie set in the hot, dry and dusty Sahara Desert and starred Humphrey Bogart and was directed by Zoltan Korda. It is a film that is guaranteed to make you thirsty as you watch it. The film opens up in Libya. It's in the desert in North Africa. And we meet the character Sergeant Joe Gunn, who's played by Humphrey Bogart, and his M3 Lee Tank, a.k.a. Lulabelle. He's with the character Waco, played by Bruce Bennett, who I caught recently in a Tarzan movie, as well as Jimmy Doyle, played by Dan Duryea. And they're on the move in this big old tank going through the desert, and they soon encounter a scrappy group of British soldiers who join with them. And they're led by Captain Jason Halliday, played by Richard Ahern. And he basically respects the sergeant's lead here, and his soldiers all fall under his command. So Bogart's character, Gunn, is sort of in charge of the group. So some of the characters that come along include Ozzie Bates, played by actor Patrick O'Moore, and even Lloyd Bridges as a British soldier. You know, Lloyd Bridges, I picked the wrong week to quit drinking. You know that Lloyd Bridges. There's Louis Mercier, who plays the character Frenchie, and Guy Kingsford plays Peter Stegman, among others. Well, we've assembled this ragtag band, and they travel for a while through the desert, and they soon encounter a Sudanese Sergeant Major Tamble, who's played by Rex Ingram, who has taken an Italian prisoner, the character Giuseppe, who's played by J. Carol Nish, who and I'm probably pronouncing all of these wrong. I apologize. Look, I watch these old films. I try to research it. I try to say it right. But if I'm getting it wrong, I'm sorry. Correct me in the comments. Anyhow, J. Carroll Nish was actually nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor for his role here. So that's pretty cool. They bring along the character Temple and they're ready to leave Giuseppe behind. But he's pleading for them, saying, you know, I've got a wife and a little bambino and so on. They leave him behind, but Sergeant Gunn has a change of heart. And they say, okay, he can come with. So they're traveling through the desert some more, and soon a German fighter plane spots them and opens fire. They return fire, hit the plane, and the plane crashes. The German pilot bails out in his parachute, and he's captured. Now, he doesn't speak a word of English, and he surrenders to them. And he's basically a jerk. You know, he's sort of the stereotypical Nazi, boastful and all that stuff. He's played here by Kurt Kruger. Now, Sergeant Gunn is like ready to belt him, but they bring him along. You know, because Bogart doesn't take well to Nazis. We know that from some of his other films. Well, meanwhile, the character Fred Clark's in Lloyd Bridges. He's not doing too well. He definitely picked the wrong week to quit drinking. Well, he was injured earlier and he is in bad shape and he eventually dies and they leave him buried and move on. And soon they encounter this huge dust storm and man does this film make you feel dirty and thirsty. And I wanna keep saying that because wow, they really did the desert theme so well. So they end up spending this night in some old abandoned, some stone ruins that they found. And the next day, Sergeant Temple locates a dry well, but when he descends down into it, there's a very slow trickle of water. So he's able to slowly gather some water for all the men to get a drink. Meanwhile, it appears that a large group of German soldiers are in pursuit. They find the grave for Clarkson, and they're kind of on this trail. And they're led through the desert by this character, Sheik Ali, who's briefly in the film, played by actor Frank Lactine. And I've actually seen him as a character actor who was in a Hopalong Cassidy film, as well as a Tarzan movie. Oh, that was kind of neat to see him. Well, the Germans are in the same situation of desperately needing water as well. So Waco, he descends into the well to hang out with Sergeant Temple, and they have this goofy conversation about, you know, what's the right number of wives to have. And I really liked both Bruce Bennett and Rex Ingram in this film. It's just two guys hanging out in a bleak situation. And truth be told, for a film in 1943, I really thought that Rex Ingram, as a black man, was really portrayed in a very positive, intelligent way. And to be honest, I mean, that's not always something that you would see in films from the 1940s time frame. I really thought that was cool. And I really liked the friendship that he and this Bruce Bennett had in the film. Well, Sergeant Gunn sends Waco out across the desert, hoping to get some help from the nearby British 8th Army. And when a group of German scouts finally arrives at the outpost, Sergeant Gunn and crew, well, there's no peace. They mow them down and they take a couple prisoners and they ask him questions using water as a motivator. 
and they learn that more Germans are on the way. Sergeant Gunn then asks his men to make that difficult decision about staying and digging some trenches and fighting. So indeed, they dig some trenches in the dirt and they manage to fend off the first wave of the German soldiers. But soon, a German officer approaches Sergeant Gunn with terms of surrender, that they could just you know, leave with what they have. And the Germans think that there's plenty of water at this outpost, so it's sort of a ruse they have going. Gunn refuses and they prepare for another assault. And while the fighting rages outside, this character Giuseppe, he gets into this impassioned argument with the German prisoner about the lunacy of Hitler and so on, and a fist fight ensues. Things are looking really grim for our scrappy band of heroes. Will they hold the line? Will the Allied support arrive to help them? Or will everyone just die of lack of water? Well, you need to watch the film for yourself to see. Now, closing thoughts. Did I mention that this film makes you feel thirsty? Uh, I put this right up there with The Treasure of Sierra Madre that also had Bogart and Bruce Bennett as one of those icky hot films that just leaves you feeling dirty and gritty. <laughs> I read that the cast and crew spent 11 weeks on location in it's a California desert, specific the Borrego Desert in the Imperial Valley, north of the Mexican border, as well as parts that were filmed in Yuma, Arizona. And during the filming, the cast and crew they stayed at this planter's hotel in the town of Brawley, about 40 miles from the filming location. I did a little research, and it looks like this place burned to the ground back in 2007, so no pictures. There's a lot I really enjoyed about the film. All of the actors are fantastic. Miklos Rosas does an awesome musical score for this film. And, you know, a lot of interesting things going on in the film, namely this diverse cast of international characters. And... Lots of twists and turns that really leave you wondering how things will end. You know, it's kind of keeps you guessing up to the end. The sand effects were also very well done. And you really have that enclosed feeling of being out in that hot desert sand. There's notably a scene as Bruce Bennett's character. He's crawling through this hill of sand that just flows down like water. It's about the one hour and 30 minute mark. It was really cool. Sahara was later remade by... Andre Daytoff, a director of a few films I've watched, like Crime Wave and House of Wax, but it was remade as a Western called Last of the Comanches in 1953. I definitely need to check that one out. And also there are similarities to John Ford's The Lost Patrol from 1934. So this was a great film. And of course, Bogart is amazing as this sergeant struggling to survive in this challenging environment. All of the characters are great. Look and the feel of this harsh desert environment is just so good. It is a great film. It's worth checking out. And quick final thought. Maybe this is just me being a little bit crazy, but I realize that this film followed Casablanca in 1942. And I watch it. And I can't help but think that maybe before coming to Casablanca, was this Rick Blaine out in the desert fighting against the bad guys? Maybe. North Africa? Hmm. And, you know, he's this bitter, jaded smoker. Maybe he finally settled in at Casablanca. No problem getting a drink there after all that time spent in the desert. All right, that's just a thought. You know, maybe I'm reading into it too much. Anyhow, that's Sahara. It's a great film. It's worth checking out.